I'm here with Chris Carpenter. We're up on Spring Mountain in the Wordle Vineyard, which is a backbone for one of your La Coya cuvées, the Spring Mountain cuvée. In the background, tell us what we got going on here, uh, new planting. So new plantings of uh, Cabernet, uh, Clone 4 on 3309. This was a block that had uh, several things going against it. Uh, it had a tremendous amount of Utypa. Uh, you can see that it's shaded a little bit over here. Uh, and it got affected by the fires, which you can see how close those fires came, that, that the tree line. So those first 10 or so vines on that side of the vineyard uh, burned. So we took an advantage of those three coming together and, and replanted this. And we're really excited about it. this. Is, this vineyard has really shined for us with the La Coya, uh, uh wines. And we're hoping that this block will add another element to it. One of the great things about the Wordle Vineyard, it's got every angle to the sun. It's got a run and rise of about 150 feet. Um, it's, so it's got different soil depths, uh, different uh, air pockets layer themselves in here. And I get a lot of great diversity in this vineyard. And this, this block will be one of those places where I'm looking to add another level of complexity uh, from what I get from this rootstock and clone versus some of the old boys over here. Yeah, so you've got experience with the vineyard because you've been working with this older portion here. Now you said, let's walk into the row. Planted 96, which is kind of old by Napa standards and cordon pruning. So not what we typically see on the valley floor here. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to work with these guys. So these, these are unusual in a couple of different ways. One, as you mentioned, they're pretty old uh, from 96 relative to Napa. Uh, they're planted on Freedom Rootstock. Uh, it's clone 169. Uh, so a very vigorous rootstock, um, a somewhat devigorating clone, but you can see, I mean, you see the size of this trunk. Uh, now this is a, a, a Utypa effect over here, but this is a really thick trunk, uh, good sized cluster. Uh, this is one of the very first vineyards for us in my portfolio of wine, of mountain wines that ripens. And a lot of that has to do, I think, with not only the age of these, uh, vines, but this, again, this terroir that we're in, it stays a little warmer here, it gets a little more sunlight, and um, the vines ripen and respond really well. And you can see a little bit of weed growth along here. This vineyard's 100% organic, and one of the uh, factors of organic that you learn to live with is uh, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but from a, if you were to open up these soils and look what's going on in the soil health, that's beauty unto itself. And they're, they're, the soils are as healthy as they've ever been, uh, and and what we also ultimately do is just incorporate these weeds back into the soil, raise the nitrogen level, and get ready for the next year. Early ripening mountain fruit doesn't usually go hand in hand. I mean, that's uh, mid July. You're already in almost full right. raisin with some of this. This is one of uh, so I have vineyards on Diamond Spring, Hall, Veter. I get uh, some fruit that I buy off of Atlas Peak. This is one of the very first vineyards. Even you know Diamond Mountain used to own that crown, be, be ver the very first to uh, ripen. This is uh, this is absolutely one of the very first vineyards that we ripen on uh, on any of our mountain vineyards. It's which the backbone. Is and yeah, it's the backbone of the for the bottling. Spring. But you said it's got a very distinct quality on its own, which is why you like to blend in a little bit. Yeah. So what's the quality of the fruit from here? So the fruit from here tends to have broad tannins and more of that dark fruit. Spring Mountain, when you think think of spring, most of how I perceive it, it's more red fruit and a lot more concentration of red fruit, I should say. And it's got a perfume that's more reminiscent of like rose petal and orange blossom. Whereas this vineyard tends to have a lot more of that dark fruit character and a broader tannin. So I'll weave in a little bit of fruit from our Everton vineyard, which is in the very top of the mountain at around 1900, between 1900 and 2100 feet. That's a lot more red fruit and perfumey and I'll balance that out. But from a La Coya perspective, it's a def definition of spring at, at, at its California best. This vineyard rocks. Chris Carpenter, known as the mountain man of uh, Napa Valley for all those mountain AVAs he plays with. 